Good morning. So good to see all of you on a, on a cool day. It's feeling like fall out there, and I, I love the season of fall. It's, it just makes me get excited, because that means I have to just cut leaves and leaves and leaves. So, Folks, uh, just a couple quick announcements, and then we're going to start with our morning. Um, we're grateful that Amy's here today. Uh, she'll be introduced to you in a moment by um, uh, Dr. Camerdis, and so thank you very much, Amy, for helping us that way. And um, coming up this Friday, our chapel speaker is Haley Barger, and so we invite you to come to chapel. On Friday evening, there's a, a viewing of the movie God is Not Dead uh, that'll be here in the chapel. I believe it begins at 7 p.m., and you're invited to come and uh, sit in on that movie. And then uh, coming up, we have an international peacemaker who's going to visit Westminster from Malawi, and he'll be with us over the weekend of October 5th. We'll be celebrating World Communion Sunday uh, while he is here, and so we invite you to come and, and participate in that. If you're a singer, this evening is a gospel choir, and so we encourage you to come out and, and sing. I'd like to begin this morning with a prayer, so let me pray. Lord God, we come this morning excited to be present with you in this place. We pray that you will speak to us today through Amy. May her message be one that inspires us, one that comes from you. Lord, we're grateful for opportunities to learn that will happen during the course of this week. Keep us energized, keep us focused, allow us to do all that needs to be done before we run to the next things. So, Lord, be with us as we spend time in chapel with you this morning. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. One of the things I like best about Westminster is the ability to maintain contact that you have with your advisees. Amy Roth was my advisee for four years, and I've been able to uh, keep in touch with her throughout the years that she graduated in December of 2005. Amy did her student teaching, um, in a, half of it in a traditional second grade, and the other half was at McKeever Enviro Environmental Center. Because of her interest in outdoor education, we were able to make that happen. So when she graduated, she pursued that interest and went to Florida and worked there for about six months in the Florida Keys. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And that wasn't quite her, her dream, so she found, um, had an interest that took her to California, Southern California, and she worked at a place called High Trails for a number of years, and then um, she was led to another opportunity in the northern part of California, right outside of San Francisco and in Sierra Ranch, and she's now working there. She's going to share with you how she ended up there, but it's also nice to know that there are lots of options when you have that degree that permits you to, to teach. And um, we're going to let Amy tell you about some of the things that she has done thus far. But our scripture for this morning is Romans 15, verse 5. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and here's Amy Roth. Thank you, Dr. Camerdy. So I am so excited to be here with you all today. Uh, the track that has led me to be here to speak with you about gender and sexuality identity um, is very non-traditional, as is my role at my current job. So I want to let you know that in December of 2005, when I was graduating, I probably wouldn't be the person standing here giving this chapel. Um, over the last nine years, I have had the opportunity through personal experience to meet a lot of wonderful people and to see that the world is very diverse, possibly more diverse um, than I even you know, had an idea of. So, my role um, was elementary education and childhood development. I ended up thinking I was just going to take a couple months at a fun job before I would hunker down and get a, a teaching job. And I found myself bouncing from place to place. 
And also moving from um, student instruction to more of an administrative track. And that is a really awesome opportunity to mentor staff. And I found that teaching staff is maybe more my calling than teaching students. So I hope that in speaking with all of you today that you have the chance to see that where you start does not have to be where you finish. Um, you do everything through baby steps. You won't find that somebody is going to hand you a card when you graduate and say, this is your life, have fun. Um, you're going to have a lot of opportunities. And I challenge you to say yes when opportunities arise. Um, saying yes has put me in some uncomfortable places, but I've always said yes to the people I trust, and I trust that that discomfort is going to teach me something. So I, I truly believe that trusting in people and um, saying yes has really given me the opportunity to learn a lot. And one of the things that I said yes to was one of my roommates, uh, who is also an educator. She teaches math at a Jewish day school. She said, hey, there's this free professional development opportunity. It's on a Saturday. It's in the city center of Oakland, California. They're going to give us free Thai food. I'm like, do you want to come? And I was like, free Thai food. I'm there. So I didn't really know like, what this professional development opportunity was going to be, but I trust her. And so it turns out that the Groundspark organization, which it made a, docu a series of documentaries, they made one about gender identity. And that was what they were presenting on. They wanted to give local educators and administrators um, a copy of the curriculum, a copy of the documentary, and a chance to learn how to facilitate it in classrooms. So later this morning, we're going to watch about five minutes or so of this documentary, and it is geared towards middle school and high school students, and the curriculum guide that I have is geared um, to teach educators how to facilitate these sorts of character development conversations in the public schools, which is a pretty tall order to fill. So, um, like I said, I majored in elementary education, and part of my philosophy of teaching is that I try to take myself out of center stage as much as possible. So I know that I'm here to present to you, but I would love the help of a couple volunteers. We're going to start with a little interactive activity, which I do adore. So I would love maybe three or four people who aren't scared to stand next to me for a couple minutes. And you're just going to kind of be the small subset of our chapel population to help illustrate a couple of ideas. So can I have three or four volunteers? All right, come on up, two. One more, one more brave volunteer. I prom I showered today, so I don't smell. Okay, yes, okay. So I'm gonna turn it around. Perfect. All right, so we are going to be exploring what we know about gender roles and how we have learned the gender roles that we experience in our lives. So your job is to come up. I'm going to hand you an item. Hopefully you'll know what that item is. If not, you can discuss. And as general consensus, you're going to decide if the item is traditionally masculine or feminine. And I'll know that what you've selected because you'll place it on the chair or in, yeah, you'll place it on the chair with the correct sign. So the first item is right here. So as a general group, you can talk, like if you need to discuss, discuss to the audience so they can hear what you're talking about. But go ahead and decide what you would say that item is. All right, item number two. All right, and last but not least, item, item number three. You need to read the title to the audience so they can see what it is. It is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. You can speak loud enough so everyone can hear. Are we allowed to put things in the middle of the chairs? So they ask if they're allowed to put things in the middle of the chairs. I would challenge you to discuss as a group and see if maybe you could find a category to put that into. I personally would say male, but I know I'd put it in the middle of the chair, but I have a couple follow-up questions for you all on how you made your decisions and then you can sit down in a second. So it looks like you've chosen to put the yoga mat into the feminine category. You were pretty um, firm on putting the hammer into the masculine category and then you had a little bit more conversation about where to put the Harry Potter book. So for any of you to answer 
Would you say that making those decisions, was that easy, was it difficult? How would you describe that process? I would say somewhat easy. Somewhat easy? Kind of just pops in your head one way or the other. Okay, great. Anybody have anything different to share? With each of the items, like it could possibly go either way. So it's hard to like make a quick snap judgment that it's definitively this and these aspects. It could be that agenda. You're at a liberal arts college. I like that response. Um, <laughs> Putting things in boxes is not something that you're probably challenged to do at Westminster, so I appreciate that. And I guess the one item I saw you all hesitate on was the Harry Potter novel. Um, talk to me about that. Like, what would you have preferred to do if you could? I think we would have liked to put it in the middle because I know a lot of people, like I loved reading Harry Potter as a kid and I'm a female, but so did my brother and he's a boy. So um, I think we ended up putting it in the male because Maybe more males read it, like Harry's a guy, so. Okay, so I guess if we, if these were people and not just items, if that was a construction worker, if that was a yoga instructor, if this was, you know, a, a person reading this book, imagine not fitting. Imagine what it would be like to not have a way to describe how you are or who you are. If people say, you can't be this or that, we want to just put you off to the side. Like, how would that make you feel? Very restrictive. Restrictive. That's great. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about gender identity. And if we have a binary, which is masculine or feminine, one or the other, and we impose that on the people in our world, how that will impact all of, all of the people who are in our community. So I want to thank you guys. If you can give a round of applause for our volunteers. You can sit down. I really want us to think about if there are limitations to thinking about gender on a binary. It's something that I know growing up, um, that's what I was exposed to. And there really wasn't anyone telling me that anything different existed. Uh, I was really grateful to come to a liberal arts college. And I think that that did challenge me, especially through the inquiry program, to think outside the box. And not to accept what you see, but to think about what you see. And if you choose that that's what you believe, that's great. And if you decide that you expand beyond the, you know, what you've been presented with, that's even better. So um, the organization that has made the change through film, I think that that's really cool because film is a very non-threatening means to learn about new information. There's no one standing in your face grilling you. You have time during the presentation to decide what you believe. It's easy to see a lot of different perspectives all at the same time, people you might not have the chance to meet in person, and it brings those resources to us in a very compact and well-edited way. So I really enjoy learning things through film. Um, I was almost a film studies minor. I know Jeff Brissett said he would try and make it, but I didn't have enough time to fit it all into my schedule. So I find a lot of value in film. Um, the five minutes we're going to watch is kind of the middle of this documentary. If you are interested in knowing more about the documentary, I'd even be willing to donate it to the education library. So uh, it's a really cool program. And again, as you're watching this, just think about the fact that it is geared towards high school students. So the documentary makers have definitely encouraged the people taking part um, to talk as though they're talking to their friends. They want to give a very candid and open opinion of their interviewing high schoolers, and they want the audience watching it to feel like they're being talked to. So um, we'll watch about five minutes, and while you're doing that, please do think about limitations of gender as a binary, and if there's another way we might be able to think about gender that could be more inclusive. sex and you're thinking about who you're going to date and you're trying to figure out who you are. Everybody thinks, you know, a guy is supposed to be a guy, it's supposed to be straight, a girl's supposed to be a girl, she's supposed to be straight. And not a lot of people talk about gender roles and how the envelope is like pushed half the time and how other people do other things. I may be male and I may be straight, but I'm not completely rigid and narrow way of what you would call masculine. I don't know where I stand in the whole manly versus, you know, feminine and I don't feel that I fit into either category, but because of the pressures that I've had to deal with, you know, I have to sort of go towards the manly side. I feel like I have um, 
both masculine and feminine qualities. I don't feel one way or the other. On one hand, I feel really girly, but on the other hand, I don't. I'm just not female. <laughs> you know, my body may be, and other people may think that that's how I identify. All I know is that it doesn't match. My experience is that there's not two genders. There's really a spectrum. There's everything from boy and girl to transgender to uh, tomboys. Part of growing up is finding out where you fit on that spectrum. And um, I just happen to fit on the transgender line. I like to play with gender roles because um, it confuses people. I like it when a guy thinks that I'm a girl and then figures out that I'm not a girl. I love that. I like it when chicks, you know, they think I'm gay and then I hit on them and then like somehow we make out that night and they're just confused with life. I like that too. One time I think my mother was kind of almost a little freaking out was when I got a new haircut and in order for me to hold my hair up, I needed to put a roll, like a curler, in my hair to keep it up. And it was a little pink roll so my mom was fine with it kind of at home and like in the car, but when I stepped out the car, she was kind of like, wait, are you not going to take it off? And I was like, mom, I can't take it off yet. It won't work until like 11 o'clock. So she's like, oh my gosh. I think that I have felt like I don't fit into a specific gender for my entire life. When someone asks me, are you a girl or a boy? I say I'm a girl because that's who I am biologically. I've always been told to mark the box that says girl. I mean, to check girl, it's saying that you look like a girl, you dress like a girl, you talk like a girl, you like guys. And once I check that box, that's who I'm supposed to be, but that's not who I am. Look at this. I mean, it comes up every day. Going to the bathroom, I have to decide whether I want to go to the male restroom or the female restroom. And buying clothes, I have to go to the boys' section or the girls' section of the store. It just feels like everywhere you go, there are gender messages. There's no real way to make a decision in the world without having to think about gender. Like, they make sure every product has its counterpart in boys and girls. This is for someone who's trying to be sexy and, you know, it's exciting ex and, like, cheerleader -y. And this is for, like, sporty person. Right. And it's exactly the same active ingredients. Yeah. You know, you have aluminum zirconium in both of them, the same percentage. Yeah. It's, the purpose is antiperspirant. I mean, they're pink, they have hearts, they have flowers. Fishing, outdoors, roughing it kind of stuff. Girl, 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 boy, girl, girl, boy. Boy, boy, boy. Women's backpack, designed and sized specifically for women. Pastel golf balls. I'm not a traditional girl, and at the same time, I never felt like I was a traditional guy. A lot of times I've thought maybe I'm just transgender, maybe I am really a guy, but I don't think I would fit there either. Because transgender is when you're born either biologically male or biologically female, but you identify as the opposite gender. So you are still fitting into the traditional gender boxes, you're just not fitting into the one that you were born as. And to me, gender queer, which is how I identify as, is when you are more in the middle, where you're not just switching genders, you're just moving beyond gender. But society is set up in a way where there really is only two genders, and once you start trying to break those gender roles, it makes people scared. A child who has an identity that isn't being valued by society. Um, I know that I asked you all to consider the limitations of thinking about gender on a binary. Look, these are real high school students who identify differently than, than something within the binary. So, you know, you can think about in your mind, like, if you are trying to come up, you know, with a presentation, or you're trying to do some critical, critical problem solving, all these things, if you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is, you know, something psychologists describe, the way that people are motivated, needing basic needs met first, like food, water, shelter, 
and then they need acceptance, and then after they're accepted and respected, they can accomplish things. They, they have the mental capacity and fortitude to do things like critical thinking and problem solving. If you are stuck in the middle and you don't have people who support you the way that you are, the way that you feel you were made, then that's something that can be really challenging. So I guess the takeaway for me from all of this, you know, I personally identify as a female. I personally identify as, as heterosexual. And I personally identify as being white. Like these are ways that I have not had to experience prejudice in my life. I don't have the first hand experience that these high school students have. But I can stand up and be an ally on behalf of people who might be different from myself. And I guess that that's what I would challenge all of us to do is if at any point you felt uncomfortable hearing about and uh, different areas of the gender spectrum, um, just to think about the fact that they're not asking you to be transgender. They're not asking you to change who you are. They're asking you to accept them as they are. And that's something that I challenge all of us to do, whether you know it's on, in regards to the gender spectrum or elsewhere. So we have a definition of being an ally, and it's up here. It's an individual who speaks out and stands up for a person or a group that's targeted or discriminated against. And I would say that I've always been tolerant of people who are different than me, but I haven't always been an ally. I haven't always actively stood up and stood shoulder to shoulder with people who are having a hard time and listened to what they needed. Um, and that's something that all of us can do today. So if someone comes up to you and they say, I'm having a hard day, like it doesn't matter what it is, you can be their friend and you can listen to them. Um, people shouldn't ask you to change who you are, but they can ask you to listen to how their day is. So there are a couple characteristics of being an ally and there are also some action items of what we could do today to start being an ally. Um, there's a handout that we have a couple copies if you're interested in taking one about things you can do today, um, things you could do if, you, if there's a youth in your life that you feel needs an ally, things they can do for themselves, and also action items that parents or guardians or community members can take. But in regards to being an ally, I would say there are three characteristics that stand out to me. The first is equality for all. So Respect for All is the program that um, this documentary series is a part of. And the respect that they're encouraging everyone to have is honoring everyone as they are. Um, understanding your own place in relation to the issues that you're, you're being an ally for. So again, understanding my piece of the puzzle and where I stand as a white heterosexual female um, in the role of gender identity is really helpful because like I said, I might not understand the perspective of someone who had first-hand experience of bias or first-hand experience of bullying because of who they are. But if I understand that I've, I come from a different end of that experience realm, then that's gonna, it's gonna really help me out in being patient and listening to them. And also, I would really encourage us all to continue being lifelong learners. Uh, there is a lot that I did not know before I moved to the San Francisco Bay Area. And just meeting wonderful people and hearing them talk about their lives really opened my eyes a lot. And it's a little bit scary at first because it feels different. Um, but when you are patient with yourself and you're willing to listen to other people and realize that diversity is what makes our life a beautiful place, then you can honor when you make a mistake, maybe when you say something insensitive, you can honor when you've grown and you've really become a stronger person and that's gonna help you be an ally too. So um, it's not something that I would expect anybody today to change their stance on. If you are a little bit more like I was in 2005 and you're like, I will listen, that is wonderful. Um, if you take away from today's discussion the fact that there are non-traditional professional development opportunities for teachers, it's not all algebra seminars. There are character development opportunities for teachers and there are people who care a lot about developing the whole self of the students and not just their test scores. So that still exists. That's something you can take away. Um, and you can also take away that it's really important to listen and just to be friendly to one another. And that's something that is so Christian. It is the basis for how we care for one another. And it's not necessarily gonna always be easy, um, but as an ally and as a Christian, it's our job to stand up and say, being respectful of one another is the right choice. 
So I wanted to take a couple minutes, if anyone has any questions for me, um, to ask about how to use, you know, how to be a lifelong learner, um, any questions that this might have brought up for you, and then also just take the, this moment to say thank you so much for coming to this presentation. And if you do want a copy of the action items on how to be an ally, uh, Dr. Camerdis has those here up front. So, does anybody have any questions? You guys are all here today because you read the description and you might already be on board with all of this. So, um, well then in that case, I just want to say thank you so much for coming out and I'll be here if you want to chat afterward. As I was thinking about the objects that you used, I actually like yoga. I don't have a clue why, but I like to do that on occasion. And I know some incredible women who can swing a hammer and uh, that are in our habitat groups. And if you're done habitat, uh, we know who you are and are proud of you. So um, thinking about how we cross cultures and as individuals is something that we often aren't aware of. We're aware of who we hang out with and what we're like. Uh, and the challenge that we have is the reminder that God loves us for who we are. And sharing that love with others, whether you agree with where they are in their journey and who they are as a person, um, is not as important as to communicate that God loves them as they go through that journey. And they go through it al not alone, but together. And so we are reminded of that. So thank you. As you leave today, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord take you to places that you never imagined possible. May the Lord help you to do things that will make a difference. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.